Okay, this week, we're going to look at something which I think is probably one of the most powerful tools available to you in Lightroom Classic. It's a little bit hidden away. We've kind of looked at it in loads of different videos. We use it here and there for a few of these editing tutorials, but we're going to look at it in a little bit more detail. You can use it for all kinds of genres. It's incredibly helpful and it allows you to really get some get some great masks going and actually affect your photos in all kinds of different ways. Let's get into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh, mm, a fresh photography tutorial. This week, we're diving back into Lightroom Classic. We're going to look at intersecting masks, which is basically when you take one mask that you draw onto your photo, and you intersect it with a different kind of mask. Sounds a little bit confusing, sounds a bit technical. Actually, it's really, really easy, but the way you get to it is just a tiny bit hidden away, I think. Let's take a look. It's incredibly powerful. We're going to start with the portrait photos. We've got this photo of me, but actually we can use this for portraits, landscapes. I mean, really anything at all. Product photography. There's so many ways to use this. I will be honest with you. I use this in probably almost every photo that I edit which is wild. Let's take a look at exactly what I mean. So this photo of me, we're going to start by brightening one side of my face and darkening the other side, just to really lean into the kind of contrast, the drama of it, all that kinds of fun stuff. Now, there's a few different ways we could do it. We could actually go in, let's look at a radial gradient for this one, right? We could draw a radial gradient, something like this, right? And we just put it so that it's kind of just coming over one side of my face. We could brighten that up a bit. Now, it works in this photo because the background is super dark, so Actually, it's not too bad. Let's get another radial gradient, right? We go something like this. We could also have used uh, a linear gradient, right? We want to feather it onto the face a little bit. We darken this side. That actually works pretty well. Like I say, because the background is dark, actually, that's fine. However, that's not always the case. It's not actually ideal. You know, we've got the mask. If we press O, most of the mask is actually over the background there. So we can come up to this mask, mask one, which is this radial gradient brightening one side of my face. And we just right click on the mask, intersect mask with, and in this case, we're going to click select subject. Now I'm now going to only apply that radial gradient, so feathered, lovely, where it intersects with what Lightroom considers to be the subject. So in this case, obviously that's me, Lightroom's worked out, okay, with the photo the subject is me, so the radial gradient will only be applied when it actually intersects with me in this photo. However, I can still select it, I can still move it around, and with that overlay you can see that I'm able to control how much that's kind of feathering on. I can, I can make it bigger if I want to, make it more feathered essentially like that. I've got so much control, I can still go back in and brighten things if I want to. Let's do the same with the other side. So we, we've got this mask too. We're going to come up here, right click, intersect mask with, select subject. Again, exactly the same thing. Can still move it around. Incredibly powerful. So I can go in and darken this side. Now we've got these two masks. I can turn them off and back on. In fact, let's just take that overlay off. So you just do that by pressing O on the keyboard. Mask off and on. We're just leaning into that kind of slight more contrast of this photo, right? We're just adding a bit of drama to it. But more importantly, we have got so much control with how we want to apply these masks. How else would we do this though? Let's take a look. So, okay, we've got this photo here, more of a sort of landscapey photo, but something that I'll do a lot, and actually we've done this in a few of the videos that we have produced where we're looking in Lyrum. Let's go ahead and create a new mask. Let's do a linear gradient. Let's darken the top of the sky. So we're gonna bring this in, feather it down really nicely, but you'll see obviously it's going over the kind of foreground elements here. Okay, so let's bring it up a little bit, but it's still spilling on there. Let's darken the top of that sky. Lovely, that's quite interesting. Visually, that's quite interesting. Interesting. However, we've got it on our kind of foreground elements here. So we're going to go mask for, right click, intersect mask with, select sky. Fantastic. Now it's going to work out where the sky is and only apply that linear gradient onto where the sky is also there in the photo. So if we press O, we should be able to see the overlay for this mask. Yeah, we absolutely can. But we still have the ability to move this linear gradient up and down. But as you can see, even if I come all the way down now, it's only going to apply it where the sky is. So I've got full control to darken as much of the sky as I want to. If I press O, you'll be able to see actually just it working. So darken the whole sky, darken just the top. I can feather it as much as I want without affecting 
the foreground elements. It's only going to apply it where the sky is. You can even do this with things like luminance range masks. So for example, let's go in here and do a linear gradient. Let's bring this in from the kind of windows, but we only want this mask to apply where the light is coming in, right? So we go up here, mask one, we're gonna intersect mask with uh, luminance range. And we're just gonna bring this bring this up. We've actually got a, a whole video on how luminous range masks work, but essentially we can now mask this based on where the brighter areas of the photo are. And we can feather it a little bit, make it a little bit softer. So let's go for something like that. You can see the overlay of this mask is showing us exactly where this is going to be. So this is, this is working quite well, I think. I think that works, but because it's still our linear gradient that we've actually painted in, we have got full control to bring this in as much as we want to, but only where the light is coming in on the photo. So I can still move it around. And now maybe I want to, let's click off the overlay. Now maybe I want to warm up those brighter areas a little bit, maybe bring the whites up, maybe bring even the exposure up a little bit. Something, something like that. But we're only applying it where we've got our feathered linear gradient plus where the light is in the photo because we're using the luminance range alongside that linear gradient. Actually combining two masks like this is unbelievably powerful because it does allow you to use those nice feathered masks, linear gradients, radial gradients, but only in selected areas that you want to use them. And you can still move everything around. It's so easy to undo things. If you want to in Lightroom, you still got full control, but now it's even more selective over where you're actually putting that mask. Is this something you already use? If you already picked this up from the videos that we've been putting out, because we use it quite a lot in our videos, but I thought it deserved its own video, deserved a proper look at it. I'd love to know though, do you use this in your photo editing? Do you plan to use it now that you've watched this video? Let me know down in the comments. I think that's super interesting. Do you use it in another way that we've not looked at here. There's loads of ways to actually implement this into your editing. So I'd love to know. I think we're a great community here. We can all learn stuff from each other, which is really, really fun. Of course, we've got a full list of all the kit we use for all these photos, for these videos as well, down in the description. So you can check that out for yourself. There's loads of new tutorials coming, loads of reviews, all the things, all the time. So don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our new content. I will see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.